Hey, Aptera fans, I'm Chris McCammon, and I'm the content manager at Aptera. I'm here with... Chris Blust. I'm a firmware engineer at Aptera, responsible for the solar charge controller, amongst other things. Yeah, so today we're going to be talking about the solar charge controller. I've asked the community for some questions on it, and uh, we'll just kind of do a little bit of an engineering deep dive into the solar charge controller. Uh, so, first question. What made you decide to work for Aptera? Well, I'm a bit of a sustainability nerd, and when I heard about a vehicle that could be charged on purely solar power, that really uh, was super interesting to me, and I wanted to help make that happen. That's cool. So back when you were hired, I mean, it was an idea, right? And now we're driving in a vehicle that's currently being charged by the sun. So. It is cool to, to look back at that and then look at us here now, and oh man, that's awesome. What is a solar charge controller? <laughs> Good question, Chris. Uh, so as much as I wish you could just hook a solar panel up to a battery and it would charge the battery, you can't quite do that. Uh, solar panels are a little bit funky. And if you try to pull the maximum power out of a solar panel at any given time, you'll actually get less power than if you were to tug a little bit at some times and a little bit more at other times. And that's what a solar charge controller does. So a solar charge controller runs an algorithm known as maximum power point tracking, which does just that. And th these differences in you know, how much you should pull from a solar panel at any given time come from how shaded the panels are, if the panel's damaged, uh, the wear on the panels. So we wanna make sure that you get as much solar energy into your battery uh, at any given time as possible, no matter what the surrounding conditions are. So uh, we're, we're developing a solar charge controller in-house to do just that. So what's maximum power point? I know you mentioned that. We have yeah. some videos on the channel about maximum power point, but if you could explain it succinctly, what is that? So maximum power point. Um, solar uh, cells are organized into sets of cells called strings. And depending on how the sun might be landing on that string of cells or how much they're shaded or damaged, there's a different amount of power that you can get out of that string. And there's also a different way of getting that amount of power out of the string. Uh, so for different strings, you, you actually can get more power by trying to pull less at any given time. Uh, so we are always trying to find the maximum power point of that string. Uh, and that's with, where the maximum power point tracking algorithm comes from. It's a standard algorithm that is used on home solar installations and other kinds of solar. But uh, we, have, we have some added challenges with doing that in an Aptera vehicle. Cool. That's awesome. Yeah, I mean, you know, each string is at a different area to the sun. It's not like a flat panel. So the automotive curved solar panels probably make some challenges. Yeah, yeah. So this probably leads into the next thing. Um, what does our solar charger do differently? Or, or why did we decide to create our own solar charge controller versus get something off the shelf? Yeah, well, well, the first answer is we want to make the vehicle as efficient as possible so that we can deliver up to 40 miles a day of solar range. But more technically, uh, in your typical solar installation, you'll see very slow changes of, uh, of shading conditions or other kinds of differences. Uh, you know, for example, clouds moving overhead. But with an Aptera, you're driving down the highway or through a neighborhood, maybe on your trees, bridges, that will shade your, uh, your panels on the top of your Aptera in uh, very short intervals. And our controller has to correct for that quickly uh, in some conditions and slower in other conditions. So we can consistently deliver the maximum power to the battery, even when driving down a highway in these rapidly changing shading conditions. Got it, so it's ultra fast and ultra efficient. That's great. Could you explain a little bit about the development of the solar charger, maybe like when you got here, where it was at and where it's at now, and maybe even the one that's in gamma and the differences between the one in gamma and the one we're going to production with? Yeah, yeah. So we had we had the beginnings of a solar charger when I arrived, and uh, you know I I was lucky to see the the solar charger really uh, come to fruition, and, and now we're sitting in a in an Aptera that's that's powered by the sun literally, uh, which is super cool. Super cool. Um, so we have a solar charger that works, but what we want to deliver is the best solar charging system. You know, once we once we reach start of production. And what that's going to take is a lot of testing, testing, testing. We need to test these panels on, on actual Aptera vehicles with an Aptera solar charger in every kind of condition we can think of to make sure that we are delivering that, that maximum amount of power to the battery at all times. So with the solar energy, of course, you're charging the battery pack, the main pack that powers the vehicle. 
Um, but what are some other ways that you can use that solar energy with the vehicle? I, I think we have a little announcement to make today. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty exciting. So uh, it, in, a, in a typical EV, when it's just sitting there, it looks like it's totally off, but it's actually losing a little bit of power over time just because of different systems that are on or just how batteries work in general. There's leakage current. Uh, in an Aptera, because we have solar panels, even when you're fully charged, you're not losing power because our solar panel energy can go towards other things like running the air conditioning, running systems in the vehicle, topping off the battery when there's a, a little bit of a drop in the, in the capacity. Um, and... And what? Oh, I thought you were <laughs> announcing it. <laughs> okay, I can announce it, sure. Um, yeah, and there's going to be an accessory port in the back of the vehicle. So uh, this is a 15 amp, you know, 12 volt uh, accessory port so you can, you know, power your little little stove if you're camping or some, uh, you know, ex external lights if you're camping or uh, a fridge? Yeah, whatever you want. Maybe a Maybe fridge. A little tiny fridge. Tiny fridge, tiny fridge. <laughs> So it's pretty cool. Like it'll it'll really you know deliver on the promise of a vehicle that you can take off grid, go anywhere, and and kind of just camp you know indefinitely. It'll be really cool for that use. So that's a little announcement. And then you can also talk about the center console and the the ports that are up there as well. Yeah, yeah. So the center console will also have two 30 watt USB C ports. Uh, so you can charge your phone, cameras, other devices, and just like everything else in this vehicle, that'll come from solar power uh, if you're solar charging. Right. Works out. The iPhone just switched to USB C, so I mean, it, it does works for everything. It's, great. it's perfect. <laughs> Literally everything now, yeah. right? So that's really cool. Made ways to use the roughly 700 watts of solar cells um, to your advantage for day to day things. So, by the way, I'm just like driving to our house. <laughs> I just realized. I that. noticed. I was like, I was like we gotta go through the construction zone with this. That's, naturally that's driving cool. to our house, but you could loop up here, I think, if you wanted. Yeah, I will. Okay. <laughs> kind of related to those previous questions, what happens if the battery is completely full? I, I mean, I know it'll always be topping off a little bit, but mm -hmm. is there any way that the you know panels can not produce energy, or I guess that you can power other things? Yeah, it, the panels can be turned off, but. We want to use as much solar power as we possibly can. So, so like I said before, they'll they'll be there to power the AC if you want to precondition your vehicle before you get in. They'll be there to charge your phone if your phone or laptop are sitting in there charging, and to just keep the battery topped off so that you never you're never losing charge if you're sitting in the sun. Yeah, that's great because uh, as someone who owns an EV now, um, that's one of the most annoying things is just the the power drain of leaving a vehicle unattended so like if you're gone for a week on a trip yeah you know, you've probably lost 10 percent or more of your battery because it's just all the phantom drain of random things in the vehicle so that's going to be super cool to like leave on a trip and come back and your vehicle is just always fully charged here's a good question will there be any ota updates to the solar charge controller or do you think it's pretty pretty solid doesn't need any ota updates oh the, we'll, we'll have the capability for sure it'll be solid at launch but um just like everything else in your aptera that runs code it'll be software updatable so your your vehicle will get better over time and solar charging is not an exception to that uh, if we find better ways to charge in different conditions, as I'm sure we will with a fleet of Epteras out on the road giving us data, yeah. uh, we can implement those changes and push them to you in a free software update over the air. And yeah, your, your vehicle will hopefully get better over time, uh, including you know, your solar range will in, improve over time. That's super cool, yeah. If you, I mean, you just think about all the optimizations we can make for like a, a brief cut of shade like that, you know, like right. over time, we'll have a lot of data to, to make those even better. Absolutely. Uh, will each panel's output be shown in the UI? Is there a way to, to see in yes. real time what your panels are outputting? Yes, uh, that, that's one of the, my favorite things to look at right now. And I'm looking at it right now as we speak. Um, you can see which panel is out or is, is producing the most power going into your battery. And um, that's important because if you want to, you know, really optimize how you're parking your vehicle in a parking lot or yeah. in your driveway, uh, you can you can use that display to see, uh, you know, trial and error, see which which orientation is best depending on each part of the day. It's that's, awesome. That's cool. Yeah. yeah, I think people will be fighting to see who can park the best. And <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Who can who can max out the, the solar charger? Yes, via TikTok challenge. Oh, that's cool. If any of you guys have any questions about the solar charger specifically, let me know in the comments below and we'll, you know, maybe do a follow-up at some point. 
um, but also in the future we're going to be doing one of these videos uh, with a solar engineer so we can ask a lot more about the panels and things like that. So this cool. was just about the solar charger, which is a super cool innovation for Aptera, but I can't wait to do future episodes. Thanks awesome. for joining me, Chris. Thanks for talking to me. I'm Chris. And I'm Chris. Chris, and we'll see you in the next <laughs> Aptera video. <laughs> Bye. Yeah.